This is going to be a short video on opioid drugs. Opioid drugs are a class of drugs that hit the opioid receptors. The three main opioid receptors are the mu receptor, the kappa receptor, and lastly, the delta opioid receptor. The mu and the kappa are the most significant, and the drugs that we're going to be talking about affect those receptors. We're going to be going down this list. It's kind of organized in order from mu agonist to mu antagonist, and the color scheme kind of corresponds with that ordering. So let's begin with heroin. Heroin is a strong mu agonist. Its indication, like many of the opioids, is to manage pain, suppress cough, and it's a diarrhea medication. Now, manage pain it makes it an analgesic, and there are some contraindications for the use of heroin, along with all these other drugs in the green here. Uh, that is, you cannot use them with other drugs, including MAO inhibitors, tricyclic antidepressants, and uh, they do have respiratory effects where they kind of suppress the respiratory system, so you should not use them with alcohol and benzodiazepines. They also undergo hepatic metabolism, so you want to avoid them with other drugs or, or at least consider hepatic metabolism when, when using other drugs that are also hepatically metabolized. Now, heroin specifically is, is a very strong mu agonist, and it's often abused intravenously. Uh, therefore, it's not legal in the United States. Next on this list is morphine. Morphine is another strong mu agonist. It's the prototypical opioid uh, commonly used. It has various routes of administration, can be IV, can be oral. Morphine is pretty commonly used, also a very strong drug. Fentanyl is a very, very common drug. It's much stronger than morphine. And what makes it particularly attractive is that it has a rapid onset and offset, even with small doses. It also allows for pretty good cardiovascular stability, making fentanyl really, really popular in surgeries. Um, usually when people undergo anesthesia, they usually have some fentanyl going on because it's really helpful and it has a rapid onset and rapid offset. Methadone is another one. Um, methadone is used mostly for opioid and heroin withdrawals. It's another strong mu agonist. Uh, this, the mechanism here is that it's, it's administered as a mixture of an NMDA, that's a glutamate antagonist, and a mu agonist. Meperidine is specifically used in, uh, in cases where people have pain related to the gallbladder. One of the main side effects for the other opioids is that they constrict the sphincter of OD. Meperidine does not do this, so there are no biliary side effects. So if somebody has gallbladder-related pain, oftentimes meperidine is the one to use. Uh, one bad side effect of meperidine is that it causes seizures. Codeine is a slightly weaker mu agonist. Uh, it's pretty much a less potent morphine, also pretty prototypical opioid codeine. Hydrocodone is the next one. It's the most prescribed of the ones on this list, often combined with acetaminophen and NSAIDs. I believe there's a, uh, there's a brand name of hydrocodone that's combined with acetaminophen. Oxycodone, very similar to hydrocodone, uh, also a moderate mu agonist, also used to... Now, I just want to repeat again that all of these in green are used to manage pain, suppress cough, or anti-motility for diarrhea. Oxycodone is very similar to hydrocodone. Tramadol is the next one. It's essentially a synthetic codeine. This is a weaker mu agonist. It has a lower addiction risk, probably because it's weaker. Um, and some of the side effects, some of the notable side effects are that it can cause seizures and serotonin syndrome. That's tramadol. That's the weakest of the ones in green here, tramadol. Next is buprenorphine, which is a mu agonist like the others we talked about, and also a kappa antagonist. Indications for this are that it's an analgesic. It's used to suppress pain, to, to manage pain. It's used also in detoxification and as a deterrent. Sometimes buprenorphine is added to other, to other drugs, to other cocktails to make people or to prevent people from abusing them. This is called, buprenorphine is called a partial agonist because it has a high affinity, but a low efficacy at the mu receptor. So it binds to the mu receptor receptor and it kind of prevents other drugs or other molecules from hitting that receptor and it does have a low efficacy so it, it does kind of activate the receptor but not as much as the other drugs here next is nalbufine which is a kappa agonist and a mu antagonist this is to treat opioid induced pruritus which is like an itchy rash caused by a lot of the opioids. This drug was originally designed in, uh, in, in attempts of making an opioid that's less addictive and that has less side effects than the other opioids. This didn't quite work out, but they did find out that nalbufine does have the good effect of reducing the itchy rash, the pruritus that's caused by other opioids.
Next is Naloxone, which is a mu antagonist. This is a short-acting mu antagonist. Now, the main use of this is to treat opioid addiction, to prevent, not to prevent overdose, to treat overdose, to treat toxicity. It essentially reduces, or it reverses the effects of the mu agonists listed above. Uh, and it's this one specifically used for opioid overdose, um, and it has a relatively short half life of one hour. Now, Trexone, which is the last one on the list, is also a mu agonist or a mu antagonist. This one's long acting. This one's better for alcoholism. It lasts longer after a moderate dose. Both of these last two are not really used for pain or for management of pain. They are mostly used for opioid addiction, overdose, and toxicity. This has been a short review of opioids and drugs that agonize or antagonize opioid receptors. I hope it was helpful. Thank you for listening.